Hi everyone, it's Christopher Mono County Library Director and co-host of the Oxygen Starved Podcast. And it's Book Talk Friday, so it's that time I share a bit of new and old with you. And today I'm starting with the new, which is an examination of the old, The 90s by Chuck Klosterman. Just came out in February. Now this is a broad book that tries to capture the zeitgeist of the decade, but of course in a single volume, so he can't cover everything. Rather, he picks and chooses different cultural touchstones from the fall of the Berlin Wall to the fall of the Twin Towers and interweaves in that day-to-day -day reality of the last decade of the pre-internet, pre-social media age. Now, yes, of course, the internet predates the 90s, but it was that decade that it started to take off but had not yet taken over our lives in terms of redefining how we experience the workplace, TV, radio, movies, books, shopping malls, or even face-to-face -face conversations. In the 90s, the phone was still an item that at least for personal calls, you still used mostly at home, where it was tethered to a wall outlet of some sort. Caller ID didn't exist, but you could use star 69 to find out who was the last person who called you, designed at first to track stalkers, but mostly used by young people to see if their latest crush had recently called without leaving a message on the answering machine. MTV still played music videos, and when you liked a song, you bought the entire album that went with it, not just the track, and usually on a compact disc packaged in a massively unwieldy plastic sheath that was intended to deter shoplifting, but mostly just made it more likely you'd cut your finger or crack the CD case trying to unpackage it later at home. You watch TV shows like Seinfeld, that show about nothing, or Friends, and if you missed an episode and you hadn't set your VHS player to automatically record it, then you could catch it during a summer rerun, or more likely you'd just never see it at all. All of these things changed since this decade, and so in one sense this book is an examination of how these are situations we just not have patience for today. Also, Klosterman's a Gen Xer, so there's an obvious lens of examining that generation's coming of age during the 90s. He spends quality time on Douglas Coupland's satirical novel, Generation X, which of course came out in the early part of the decade and became that generation's label, as well as grunge rock, literature, sports, and movies, including a, quite a bit of time on the movie Reality Bites, which he positions as a seminal indie house film that defined a generation. Whatever. So for those of us who are Gen X, this book is a nostalgic walk down memory lane. Remember my so-called life? When Oprah was just a talk show? Crystal Pepsi? Tab Clear? Zima? Well, if you do, this book's for you. Now for the old picks this week, I thought I would remind you of just a handful of important books that helped define that period between the optimistic fall of the Berlin Wall and the sobering fall of the Twin Towers. Not an exhaustive list, mind you, just a few that might interest you if you want to take a few hours and sink back in and pretend you're back in the 1990s. And we will start with 1990s Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. A consummate thriller writer, he hit pay dirt with a book about the collision of dinosaurs, genetic engineering, and human nature that just screamed, make me into a blockbuster movie. <laughs> a few years later, a young British writer who loved music and pop culture named Nick Hornby had a hit with his first novel, High Fidelity, about a 30-something record store owner and his early onset midlife crisis. Remember record stores? <laughs> In that same year, we saw the birth of a new phenomenon through an unlikely thick book by an unheard of struggling single mother named J.K. Rowling. And the book, of course, was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And in short order, young people the world over were camping out for midnight releases of the latest Harry Potter title, most of which were well over an inch thick. This era came to a close with debut novels from two promising young writers. Sadie Smith's White Teeth, a novel that hit all sorts of best of lists and was accused of being an example of hysterical realism, whatever that means, and Dave Eggers, a heartbreaking work of staggering genius, a mostly memoir of a young man in the Bay Area suddenly tasked with raising his younger siblings after their parents die of cancer. Both of these books caught a literary wave in 2000, and both writers have since gone on to become influential literary figures in their own right. So, an assortment of books that would take you back to the 90s, or a single great book that would just help you examine it, whether you lived through it or not. Chuck Klosterman's The 90s, available at Mono County Library. Come in and grab this or another great book to sink into. In the meantime, happy Fishmas and happy reading.